Science on Surfaces. Welcome to this podcast. Today we will talk about surface-free energy. We will talk about what surface-free energy is, when and why it's important, and how to measure it. So here with me in the studio I have Susanna Laurien. Susanna is an expert on surface-related phenomena. For example, adhesion, wettability, surface tension, and surface-free energy. Susanna has been working at Biolin Scientific around these topics for over eight years. And before that, she did her PhD on microfluidics and superhydrophobic surfaces. Welcome. Thank you. So I guess one could say that today's episode will be a continuation of two of our previous episodes, the one on contact angle and the one on surface tension. Yes, yes. absolutely. So we could basically then uh, recommend the listeners who haven't listened to those episodes to go and listen to those as well. Yes, I, I, I'm pretty sure that listening to those will make it much more simple to follow this one. But of course, I will try to, to explain the terminology a little bit also here. But please go ahead and, and listen to the previous episodes. Yeah. Okay, so let's start with the basics. Um, Surface-free energy, what is that? So um, surface-free energy is a, a property of a solid. So in a similar way as uh, surface tension is a property of a liquid. Uh, so certain, I mean, liquid has a certain surface tension value. And the similar way as uh, solids have a certain surface free energy values. Uh, so we could basically think that uh, surface free energy is uh, like surface tension of a solid. Okay. So um, then different uh, surfaces have different surface free energy values in a similar way as different liquids have different values. So for metal, uh, the surface free energy is typically quite high. And for a different type of plastic uh, surfaces, the surface free energy is, is usually quite low. Okay, so why, why is there a difference between different materials? So uh, this uh, arises again from the molecular interactions. So we have uh, cohesive and adhesive interactions. And uh, cohesive interactions are interactions between uh, similar uh, molecules or atoms and adhe adhesive interactions are then interactions between a different type of, of or dissimilar um, molecules. So if we think about uh, a metal surface, for example, so metal is, is uh, inside the metal, the metal atoms are linked together with emit metallic bonds and those bonds are uh, very strong bonds. So uh, if we take a metal surface, uh, the metal atom on that surface has similar metal, metal atoms on sides and, and below, uh, but at the, uh, on top it interacts with uh, basically air molecules mm -hmm. and interaction between the metal and the air molecule is much weak, weaker. Mm -hmm. So uh, because of those very strong uh, bonds, it, it really wants to, to interact with the, with the similar metal atoms at the surface, and that actually creates the high, very high uh, surface free energy for metals because of the, the, the strong bonds between right. metal atoms. Um, and then uh, with, with polymers, for example, those kind of interactions are much, much weaker, weaker of course. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so why is uh, the surface free energy important then? Um, so basically surface free energy um, dictates how liquids, for example, behave on top of solid. So um, in, in nature you have this uh, kind of drive towards the, the energy minimums. So if you have very high uh, surface free energy, then um, basically uh, the, the surface wants to uh, lower it by some ways and one way is to absorb things mm -hmm. on its surface mm -hmm. and if you would put uh, a liquid uh, on top if it's if the surface free energy is very high the liquid would want to spread okay. on the surface okay there's like a pull towards the surface yes exactly basically. because it wants to minimize the kind of the total 
uh, energy state that it, it is in. So if you think about, again, metal surface and you would put a water drop on top, Mm. Uh, because of the high surface free energy of metal, it will spread mm. completely on the surface. But if you would take, uh, if you put uh, the water droplet on top of a plastic, it will not spread, at least not that much. It mm. will be more like a, a hemispherical droplet mm. on top because uh, the, the surface free energy is much, uh, much uh, uh, lower. Mm. So the, the amount of spreading of water then on the surface says something about the yeah. relation between the two or yes exactly so uh, we can just uh, by looking how water spreads on the surface we can we can uh, in a way predict what is the surface free energy so usually if the contact angle of water is is high then that means that the surface free energy of that surface is low and then vice versa. If contact angle is very low, then surface free energy is high. Okay. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So, but why is it important, the, the value itself? Or Well, I mean, the it's, it's of course important in many different applications, especially this all again comes, I mean, if, if, you, if you listen to contact angle episode, I mentioned the word adhesion quite often. So this comes again to, to the same phenomena, basically. So it, different applications where adhesion is important, like in coating applications, uh, surface free energies is, uh, are very important because you can basically predict how different materials behave if you want to, to glue things together, for example. Mm-hmm. And, and I mean, a little bit uh, maybe out of the scope of, of this uh, discussion, but Surface free energy is also very important in uh, in uh, biomaterial research, for example, because there's always also different type of surface interactions happening. Mm. Mm. So all kinds of um, I mean, surface interaction is of course uh, dictating by the surface free energy of your mm. of your solid. Okay, so it's a very important value or parameter or whatever you would call yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. then how can you measure it? Well, that's actually quite interesting question because you can't, um, it, there is no direct ways really to measure surface free energy. Uh, there are some very special cases like um, different type of maybe powders or porous materials where you could use methods like inverted gas chromatographies or something like that. Mm-hmm. But that's very, uh, quite uncommon uh, common to, to do it like that. So most typically you would measure contact angle on a surface and then uh, calculate surface free energy based on the contact angle measurement. So um, this would be done so that, I mean, if you think about a surface with, uh, with let's again assume a water droplet on top, so it forms a kind of hemispherical uh, shape and uh, then there is this uh, three-phase contact point where you have solid air and liquid yeah. meeting together, m- meeting each other. And uh, on that point, you have different forces affecting on, on, on to, to that point. And one of them is uh, surface tension of uh, a liquid that you have on the surface. And, uh, and that's usually quite easy to to, to measure, I mean, you can you, you there are different methods to to measure surface tension of a liquid. Then you have a surface free energy is one force, and that's what we want to know. And then you have uh, sur- interfacial uh, interactions, so uh, interfacial tension between solid and liquid, and that's actually something that you can't really measure, but you can model it. Mm-hmm. So uh, and, and that's so you model it based on some other input or uh, yes exactly so it's uh, it is um, basically modeled uh, there are different theories that are are uh, up, I mean uh, developed to to model that uh, interaction between uh, between solid and liquid okay so in the end you have. You have an equation of which some of the input you need to model. Yes, exactly. So it's, uh, I mean, nowadays uh, there are softwares that are able to, to basically do that for you. So inside the software, you have the models built in. So you don't really, I mean, 
of course, if you are curious and you really want to mm. understand what you are doing, you can look at and go and see where the models are based on. Mm. But in principle, what you need to do is if you want to measure uh, the surface, the energy of the surface, you take uh, usually at least two different liquids mm -hmm. and you measure contact angle on that surface. And based on the information about the liquids, uh, so basically surface tension of the liquid and the surface tension components of the liquid and the contact angle that we measure, uh, the softwares are able to calculate the surface V energy. So why, why did you need two liquids? Uh, that's because usually you define, uh, you divide the uh, both the surface tension of a liquid, but also surface V energy, you divide them into different types of interactions. So. Um, you have uh, po what we call polar interactions, and then you have dispersive interactions. And in, in equations, if you want to solve those two, so you basically have two unknowns, so you need two set of measurements, you mm. need two different liquids, two different contact angle values to be mm. able to, uh, to, to solve those mm. okay. uh, equations. Well, and what would a, a dispersive liquid be? So dispersive liquid is actually, it, it, they, those are usually a little bit exotic liquids. So for example, diatomethane is very often used. And uh, there's a, a good reason for that. So uh, th the reason is basically that you want to have a completely dispersive liquid. And there are actually a lot of completely dispersive liquids around. So if you would take uh, like heptane or hexane, those are uh, completely dispersive the whole the total surface tension of a liquid is basically equal to dispersive part mm -hmm. of the surface tension but the problem is that um, the um, the value of surface tension is very low on those liquids so it's it's less than 20 millinewtons per meter mm -hmm. and what will happen is that if you place that liquid almost to any surface it will just spread oh. completely it will not form any type of, of okay. drop so, so that you very, can't really measure it it's a very low it's very value. low contact angle value yeah, yeah. so you can't really it's very low surface tensor value and then it's also very low contact angle value so you can't really measure the contact angle with that uh, low surface tension of uh, liquids. So mm -hmm. that's why you would use diodomethane, for example, which is a, a special type of liquid in a sense that it has a, a surface tension of seven uh, of uh, fifty point eight millinewtons per meter. So it's not as high as water, which is seventy two, uh, but it's it's quite high, so that it will form drops. Mm. On, on almost uh, almost any mm. any surface. So then you basically can uh, use that information from that measurement and then combined with usually you use water mm. as a polar liquid because that's, I mean, kind of given it's non-toxic, it's readily, readily available, easy liquid. So then mm. uh, you would use usually water and diatomethane and mm. then you can get... Uh, to a surface tension uh, or surface free energy of your okay, solid. Okay, so it's a it's a rather complicated theory, you would say, but it's pretty straightforward exactly. to extract the value. Yes, exactly. So I mean that the theory can be very complicated, of course, and and uh, uh, it's I mean, it, as I said, I mean if if you are interested, of course, you can try to understand the theory completely. But uh, to do the practical measurements, there is really no need because the the, sir, the, the softwares will basically do it automatically okay. uh, for you. You said that in this, I mean, when you extract this value, you base that on the contact angle values. Yes. So why isn't just the contact angle values enough in this case? Yeah, I mean, in, in many cases, they actually are. And especially if you measure, if you think about water, I talked about the polar and uh, dispersive interactions. So in water, you have quite high polar component uh, due to the electronegativity of, of oxygen. Uh, so, uh, and, but then you also have the dispersive part. So uh, water is... In water, you have in, both. You have both. Uh -huh. So you have the polar part, but you also have a uh, dispersive part. Okay. So in that sense, the water itself can already tell you something about the surface free energy because... Um, because it can it can interact with both polar uh, parts of your solid 
and the dispersive parts of your solid. So if you think about, I mean, if, if you would take a completely dispersive liquid and use just that, then you kind of uh, take away the effect of the polar interactions because the dispersive liquid is not able to interact with the polar parts mm-hmm. of your solid either. Right. But water as such is, is could be used as a kind of an indicator of the surface free energy. So you can, as I said before, you can say that if the contact angle with water is high, mm-hmm. the uh, surface free energy is low. So mm-hmm. there is this kind of a correlation. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, if you want to be able to really dig into the chemistry of your surface, then you want to know what are actually the dispersive and polar components mm. of of your of your surface and also the contact angle measurement is kind of always dependent on the on the liquid that you are using so you need to always say that okay i measured the contact angle with mm. water right uh, if you know the surface free energy value then you can basically say that the surface free energy of my solid is this mm. Um, but one one um, point here being that it is actually quite difficult to, uh, I mean, if if you would say that I have my polymer, this and this polymer, and the surface free energy is this, this, uh, I would still want to measure my own polymer with, if even if it's ex- almost exactly the same polymer because uh, the especially if, if the surface free energy is high then uh, all kinds of adsorptions and whatever happens when depending where you store your samples and mm. things like that will affect the surface free right. energy value because i was thinking that isn't the value affected with the surroundings and time and whatever things absolutely. that absorb and everything yeah absolutely oh, okay. so you need to be very careful basically when you um I mean, when you when you say that this is the surface free energy, it is the surface free energy of that surface at that given time, yeah. and uh, with all the things that you have done to that surface. So it could be different if you apply some kind of a cleaning procedure to it, or yeah. or something like that. Okay, so in some situations, the contact angle with water could be give you an indication yes exactly and in some situations you definitely want to have the surface free energy value yes so in in some situations you for example if you would you if you would um formulate new coating materials then you would maybe want to uh actually know uh the dispersive and polar components of your coating formulation but also your surface so then you can kind of match those uh, so that uh, the adhesion or the, the interaction between those two is, is, is basically optimum. Right. So is that a typical situation where you would want this value? Yeah, this is, that's, that's definitely one, uh, one of the situations. So different type of, of uh, coating, uh, coating uh, applications would be. And then uh, this is actually used quite a lot in tissue, in, I mean, in, in biomaterial research, for example. So okay. this is... Uh, surface free energies are, um, or there is a, a kind of a aim to correlate surface free energy with different type of cell behaviors, for example. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are, of course, a lot of other things that affect uh, cell behavior, like the surface topography mm-hmm. and things like that. But then uh, we know that uh, surface free energy also affects how proteins interact with the surface and then how cells interact then with the surface so uh, there i would say biomaterial research is, is definitely utilizing surface free energy measurements mm-hmm. quite a bit mm-hmm. okay are there any other like important aspects that we didn't cover uh no i think no we, we it have feels like covered we covered all the basics yes, of, of this right exactly yeah, yeah. So, yes, that's all we had for this episode then. So, uh, thank you for listening to this episode. And I just would like to take the opportunity to mention to those of you who are listening or watching that if you're interested in surface science and related topics, you should check out our blog, The Surface Science Blog. Thank you for listening to me, Malin Edvardsson and Susanna Laurien.